Ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube as well as the Twitch, welcome to the end of the month subscriber Q&A. This is the end of the month, where I take a moment out of the stream, like an hour, where we uh, sit down with the subscribers and we talk about lore. I answer questions and uh, that's what we do if you've never seen the end of the month subscriber Q&A before. Uh, for those who are wondering, like, do I need to subscribe in order to ask you questions? No, not at all, by all means. You're welcome to ask me questions in every stream, as well as send me a private message on Facebook, and I'll get back to you whenever I can. Just a heads up, I don't know what chat room is going to ask me. I don't know if they're going to be spoilers for Legion. I don't know if it's going to be about the end of Wars of Renor. I simply don't know what they're going to ask, and I don't put any restrictions on it. So if you're desperately about... If you're desperate avoiding uh, spoilers, then this Q&A might not be for you. I think that's about everything that I wanted to say before we start. Let me put the... I... I... I think a mosquito just bit me. I think it just bit me. I swear it just bit me. Anyways. Let me put the stopwatch on. Which is an hour on the clock. Hello subscribers of the chat room. How y'all doing today? Greetings, greetings. Offer. Caliber soul. Hi everybody. Does does the old gods fat? I hope not. I've seen enough hentai to know where that's going. Adi Volticon. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, the chat room. This is an hour at the end of the month. So, if you have any uh, lore questions that you'd like to ask, if you know anything, notifications or whatnot. And if we don't have enough lore questions, as always, I'll put up the chat room for everybody. But at first, I'd like to do it in subscriber mode. How much lore does a lore master know if a lore master does no lore? I'd say about as much as the achievement requires in order to get the title. That's about as much lore as a lore master knows. <laughs> I love you too, Hans Bruno. How many videos would it take to cover the Night Elves as a whole? Uh, a lot. You got uh, Origin of the Night Elves with the whole Dark Trolls. Then you got the War of the Ancients, which is like one video. Their time of banishing the High Elves and the Druids in the Emerald Dream and whatnot, and their society building. Then fast forward to the events of Warcraft 3, where the Burning Leaves are returned. So, so far we're on three videos. And then some massive events in World of Warcraft itself, so... Kinda depends on how many characters you want to do it in, but I say a solid three plus videos. Let me just scroll up the chat room so I can actually see what everybody's uh, talking about. Sub Hyper, BB Sky, welcome, welcome. Hi, everybody. Do you have any topics in mind for your next Tides of Lore? None as of yet, um, Dixie. I made a, a forum post on the WoW website in the story section if you want to check it out. Where I ask people, like every time I talk about the Horde and Alliance storyline, and whenever I talk about something that the Horde did which was bad, people come back to me like, yeah, but the Alliance also do bad things. And I'm like, yeah, this is true. But if you compare the events that happened, in my mind, from my experience with the lore, it's always the Horde that is either the first one to commit an act and the Alliance responds to it, or they're just not comparable. So I made a topic on the WoW forums to ask people like, I, I need to know what's up, I need to know what other people think, am I really that biased, am I really that much of an Alliance fanboy, or, you know, how does it compare? So I'll ask people for their opinion. So far, the list that we got with crimes from the Horde and the Alliance, perceived crimes because there's no real law, um, is pretty much lining up with what my experience is with the lore. So I was thinking about doing something like that. Like, who? Hey, I saw the mosquito. Damn it, go away. I don't want to be, be... Ah, there's a mosquito eating me. It's going to eat me alive. Um, anyways, there. I, I was thinking about maybe doing like a, a Tides of Lore where we compare... Uh, the crimes, the so-called crimes between Alliance and Horde and see who is, you know, how does it line up. But that might be a little bit too controversial, might be a little bit too much like, you know, whenever you talk about something like that, people always feel offended about things like that. So we'll see. And other than that, I don't really have any, any subjects in mind, so by all means, if you have suggestions, uh, let me know. At the end of the legendary questline, when we see Refi on the Ketgar's tower, do you have any idea what he's doing there? No. I talked about this in uh, the Legendary Storyline video, and I got no clue. I think it's because they cut out a fair portion of the storyline. Um, that, that, you know, they kind of forgot to remove Refion from the tower. Uh, which is probably the reason why he's still there. There was the whole Taylor's garrison bit. Where Refion warned Taylor, like, yo, be careful. Shit's about to go down. 
and things went down, he escaped, and that's the last thing we really heard of Raphion in, in Warlords of the Renor. So there's a big chapter missing in Warlords of the Renor, uh, presumably with Raphion. So I have no idea what he was doing there. Maybe he'll make a comment about it in the next expansion? We'll see. Oh, you flower harmony. As he, hi, Benatar. As a huge fan of the dwarves, I was wondering what you think will happen if, when Magni wakes up from his crystal nap, Jimmy AI. Um, hard to say. I talk a little bit about it at the end of Murder in Part 2. It's, it's very hard to say because Magni um, is going to wake up to a world completely changed. There's now a council where three dwarven clans are represented. His daughter returned with his grandson, which he actually, fun fact, he had a nightmare about when the whole Emerald Nightmare thing was working. Magni had a nightmare about Moira coming back with his son, and it actually happened. Um, either there's going to be a conflict between the three factions, like Magni will want to take a seat of power back. He's like, I'm the rightful ruler, what are you doing? And the other clans are like, hang on, times change, you know, your daughter has proven herself, we're getting together, piss off, find your own destiny. Or, he might come back with a warning, uh, his spirit is connected to Azeroth, he might come back with a warning, like, yo, I've been down below in Azeroth, I've seen a couple of old gods there, you know, there, there's something coming, get ready for it, and he just completely steps away from the council and the dwarves as a whole, and he becomes the next um, person to guide us into, for example, the Azara expansion, with the islands and the undiscovered part of Azeroth, or something completely different. What is the lore of the orc demon hunter guy Kazul in the Cleft of Shadows? Uh, can I do this? Will it then disappear? No, it will not. Pretty sure I typed Kazool. It just says that he's an orc, though. That's not why you've come to speak with me. If Ganru will send you, it must be that you are summoned succubus and need an object to use it enticement. If you trust the blind man to lead you, then listen. In the blessed Orgrimmar lives on Kaya. I was about to say. Like, I just made a video about demon hunters. Um, and that guy didn't pop up. So I was like, demon hunter? Orc? What? But he's not a demon hunter as far as I can tell. So I don't really know where you got the, uh, the bit about demon hunter about. Mm. We did the Raphion Tower thing, Fan of the Dwarves, Demon Hunter, KDR Man. The boyfriend wants to know if you have a sexy, sexier brother. Um, depends on your taste, I suppose. <laughs> He's five years older than me, I can tell you that much. Noble, do we know anything what Illyria Windrunner's done before she joins the unexpected journey to Outlands? Uh, that is a very good question. What has Illyria done? Like, the Windrunner sisters has always been about proving themselves. Honestly, I can't really recall a storyline of Illyria before her time that she joined the Alliance. And I'm trying to wreck my brain, like, is there a comic story? I don't think there is any storyline before she joins the Alliance of Lordaeron. Am I correct in saying that? She had a younger brother. Blah, blah, blah. No. Her story begins with Tides of Darkness. Yeah. Do you prefer the narrating voice of Bren or Cho? Uh, I really like Cho, man. Joe was freaking awesome. What is the story of the Titans' creations in Gorgrond? Um, once upon a time, the Titans, they shaped Draenor. And um, there were like two kinds of creatures. One was all about destruction, which was the, uh, the stone creatures. And one was about bringing life to the planet, the, the nature creatures. They had a specific name and I did it during the story of Gorgrond as well. So if you want more details, go check that one out. I should maybe do next time the Q&A at the start of the stream, before my brain is fried, whatever. Um, and these two factions are now clashing towards... Clashing with each other to dominate who gets to do it, like destroy or create life. Uh, Gorgrond itself is rumored to be created out of a massive Grun. Or even the predecessors of the Grun. 
Um, so yeah, that's about it there. And of course, there is the whole storyline of the um, the Titan disc that can control them, which is the whole reason why we connect the Titans to these creatures. I've talked about it in my story of Broxigar. Of um. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to end this Q&A. We're done. I'm done already. A mosquito is eating me. We're done. Ten minutes in, it's over. Um, right. It's in the story of Gorgrond. Pretty sure that I talked about it, that one. Is Raffi going to be a villain or is he dangerous? Also, do you think he planned Wallace of Draenor? Raffion, I've, I've mentioned this many times before, but Raffion is truly what we made him. An uncorrupted black dragon. Guardian of the world of Azeroth. So he will do whatever it takes to take care of Azeroth. Does that mean betraying us? If it means destroying us? If it means with allying with us? He will do whatever it takes to keep the planet safe. And as long as there are threats out there like the Burning Legion. In which you need heroes like us. In which he needs the factions. Then he's our ally. But as long as, you know, the moment that we stand in his way. He becomes our enemy. Did he plan Wars of the Draenor? Hard to say. And that comes back to the whole uh, chapters were cut out of the Wars of the Draenor storyline. Um, it go ba goes back to that because you have Raffion together with Kairos who came up with the plan or at least he was yeah they came up with the plan of releasing Garrosh and Kairos took Garrosh to this alternate reality we don't know if Raffion was on board with Kairos' plan of going to an alternate reality maybe he had other plans for Garrosh but we know that he helped him with breaking Garrosh free and he told Anduin that one day uh, he hoped he would understand and he hoped that he could together stand against the Burning Legion you gotta wonder, like, what were they trying to get with Warlords of the Denner? We know from Kairos that he wanted, like, an infinite amount of armies. He wanted to become infinite, the birth of the infinite Dragonflight, as some called it. Uh, whereas Raphion, I'd assume that his motivation would be to create more troops. Like, if you can get access to an alternate reality with uh, orcs and Draenei that you could possibly get to your side, or at least orcs that you could possibly get to your side, the Draenei were like, you know, um, then you're gonna go for that. So that could be a reason. It could be to create uh, create more troops. It could be that maybe Raffion envisioned that the Iron Horde were be better capable of defending Azeroth than our, our own Horde and the Alliance. Maybe. Oh well, yeah, you gotta wonder. Because the whole alternate characters have been set that they're gonna stay behind on Draenor and they're not gonna be part of the next expansion. Maybe they'll reverse that decision. But that's what they said. So it's hard to say. Like I said, a lot of chapters uh, are missing. Which type of coffee do you prefer to drink? Uh, coffee for me is... I'm easily pleased. As long as it tastes right and it's black, I'm fine. Hi, Dini Fedora. Do you think Blizzard moving Dalaran City to Legion is really for lore? Or just to save time so they can try and make more content? And do you like the idea? Um, not sure what you mean with try and make more content and save time. Because it's, it's not going to be the same Dalaran as we see in Northrend. Um, there are probably going to be some changes to the city. Now, it's going to be a lot easier to make. Of course, they already got the basic setup. And it would be a very easy hub. So, in that regard, I, I suppose I can get what you're saying there. I'm hoping that Dalaran will be changed enough to not make it look like a copy pasta city. That would be better. And, um, does it, will it have lore? Well, it's said that the Violet Hold is going to be part of it. And the closer it gets to the Tomb of Sagaris, um, like, ancient evils are going to wake up. So it's definitely going to have some lore. I'm hoping to see the changes. I'm, I'm wondering why exactly Jaina is walking away pissed. I'm wondering why Ketgar takes over. Even though Jaina had the whole uh, prophecy thing going on for her. Like, I, I would love to know what that's all about. But, uh, you know, time will tell. Can't wait to find out. I know the lore of the lore master should be know to be a lore master that knows the lore. <laughs> Was Flying worth doing the achievements for if you don't enjoy questing? Um, like for me flying is just something handy to have but I'm not like oh yeah that really changed my game right there it's so much better no uh, flying was just you know additionally a nice little bonus for me as teenage novel just made an appearance uh, it was a nice little bonus I think they waited too long with implementing flying um, if it was part of the whole Tanan area where you could fly up to the throne of kill Jaden, where you could do like the rap quest and all that good stuff that would be a lot better uh, but they didn't they waited too long with it and by the time that it was released i was already done with everything that tanan jungle had to offer 
So I don't really have a reason. Like, I've heard people uh, that really liked uh, farming mounts and use those mounts. Fine, you'll have your entertainment. Some people said archaeology. I got flying, but I'm still not doing archaeology. So I think it comes down to your personal preference, I suppose. For me, it didn't change that much, except for alt-leveling. Alt-leveling was indeed a lot better with flying. How did the trolls become druids, Hans Bruno asks. Let us find out. Hans Bruno knows my weakness. He knows that troll lore is my weakness. Uh, troll druid. Unknown to the lower priest, Zelazane was slowly cutting them off from the spirits when they were powerless to... What? Really? This is cool. I have never read up on... I'm, I'm... Troll lore is my weakness, man. I should really do like a troll video and get up on speed with the lore. This is kind of cool. Hang on. Unknown to the lower priest, Zelazane was slowly cutting them off from the spirits. When they were powerless to stop Zelazane, he started to take control of the Isles. Vol'jin, wanted to prevent more of his people from being controlled, gave the order to flee the Echo Isles. Many trolls, including the lower priest, witch doctors, felt that they had failed their people and took towards the untamed jungles of the southern islands. It was there, it was here even, that Zentabra had a vision. In this vision, Zentabra saw the Emerald Dream and spoke to the ancient raptor Loa, Gonk. Able to reach across and bring Zentabra's spirit to him, he tasked her and her people to save the life of the Isles and revealed a new way to connect with all the spirits of nature instead of serving just one at a time. Since then, the one's witch doctors were taught directly from the Emerald Dream and the spirits themselves. And although the spirits are not keen on teaching more of her kind, they will help so long as the Echo Isles continue to flourish with life. Neat. I never knew this. And now I do. I am happy. That's the history of the druids. Troll druids even. Do you have a video on Lorfmar for Ron? If not, are you planning to make one? The Blood Elves are my favorite race. I do not have a video specific for Lorfmar. Uh, I talked a fair bit about him in... 5.3 and 5.4. But like the whole way that he became... Uh, the leader of the Blood Elves, not so much. It's still on the list. Uh, and basically... The goal with the channel is to one day cover each and every bit of lore that Warcraft has to offer. And um, so it's on the list, it's just a matter of when will we do it. I was about to say Hans Bruno, but you copied your question twice. <laughs> Friante asked, I don't get why people say Warcraft 4 is not possible aside. Wow, we could explore so much stories, I think. War Free Hammers, Troll Wars, World of Shifting Sands, what do you think? Um, it's possible, sure. Yeah, they can. <laughs> Very simple, they can. They can go to the um, early history, like the origin of Azeroth, where the old gods and the titans did battle, and the elemental lords and all that. That could be awesome campaigns. Uh, but I think when people talk about Warcraft 4 is not possible connected to WoW, they're talking about the current lore or future lore. Because if you create something future lore for Warcraft 4, then um, you box in World of Warcraft itself. Now, knowing that StarCraft is going into its final expansion, as far as I know, Warcraft 4 might become more of a possibility. I hope so, man. Warcraft 3 is so much fun. We'll see. But those old stories definitely are possibilities. Fuzzy EP asks, I recently watched your old videos about the lore behind the legendary questline part 3 from Wars of the Draenor. And if you talk about Orgrim and the Doomhammer, when well, you talked about who picks up the web, you question, you mentioned that Blizzard had responded, you will, to the question who will be the next wielder of the weapon. In the video, you say that it's a joke answer, but do you think they actually planned for the legendary weapons of Legion when they said that? Um, no, because the kid, or at least, the, yeah, it was a kid. The kid that asked the question was clearly asking about the Doomhammer in Alternate Draenor. Like, is anybody going to pick it up or is it just going to be left there? And you're like, you are! Has anybody picked up the Doomhammer in, in Borders of Draenor? No, it's for the next expansion. Now, a lot of people were like, hey, they gave the answer, we're all going to pick up the Doomhammer. But the Doomhammer from Legion does not have the Frostwolf symbol on it. Alternate version, of does have the Frostwolf symbol on it. Alternate version should not have that symbol on it. So it's going to be Thrall's Doomhammer as far as we know. But I, I get how people are making the connection. It could be, you know, I don't know what's going on in their minds, but it seems unlikely to me.
They stayed away from the voodoo. What do you think about Jaina's father, Admiral Proudmore? Um... I'm not sure what you're asking here. What do I think about him? Handsome man. Strong leader. No, I... Uh, I agree with his sentiment from his point of view. Um, that he couldn't let go of his hatred towards the orcs. I can agree from somebody who lost his son to orcs riding fucking dragons. For someone who fought in the war uh, against the original horde. Yeah, I can understand his sentiments that his daughter is being foolish and that they shouldn't ally with the orcs. Um, hatred breeds hatred and it takes a very special kind of person to be able to break that cycle. The backlash from the orcs of the player base would be hard for that. This could have been in-game content. Oh, you're talking about Warcraft 4? Uh, maybe. What existing clause needs a big lore moment the most? Clause wise? Um, all of them? Is that a valid answer? Like, it's very hard for me to pick. I like so many aspects of the lore that, you know, very hard to pick. The first thing that, came to, that comes to mind is Death Knights. I would love to see a continuation of the Death Knights storyline because they seem to kind of stop that after Wrath of the Lich King. And I will be following your, you for over one year now. Awesome, Sky. And I just love your videos. Thank you. Lorewise, are the undead still in control of Strathholm? Top of my head, I would say no. Because after the Kedar revamp, we went into Strathholm. And we cleared it out. And then all of the soldiers popped up. And they were like, yay, we got Strathholm now. But I'm going to check it out. I'm going to look it up. Just to be sure. I don't think we have a clear answer on that one. We're gonna check it out. Um, let's see. After killing both final bosses on every side, the Arch and the Crusade attacks the city. An invisible wall blocks any attempts to access blah blah blah. Yeah, like I said, the Arch and Crusade pops up and clears it out. But I think we will never get a clear answer as to it's clear now or not. Because it's just so cool to keep adding new undead and new enemies to fight in there. If you had to choose a favorite lore moment, what would it be? A favorite lore moment? Rothgate. Like, Rothgate for me will always have a very special place in my heart because it's the moment where it sparked my, you know, my interest for the lore. But I've, I've mentioned the moment in Lord of the Glens, which was freaking amazing. I've mentioned the moment in War Crimes with the whole kindy bit that was like, ah. So there have been a couple of moments, but I think Rothgate is the, the very simple answer on that one. How can Sargeras Gul'dan go back to Illidan when he turned his back on them multiple times? What is his role in Sargeras' plans? Unknown, King Dirty Har. Um, some say, or at least I think I've heard someone say like Comic-Con, that uh, Illidan... That they think Illidan is under their control for some reason. But we don't know yet, as far as I know. It could be that... He spent his time in the Twisty Nether. It could be because he absorbed the Skull of Gul'dan that those powers connect him to Alternate Gul'dan that it found out that way. Or it could be that the Legion is just foolish enough to think that they control someone like Illidan. Nobody controls Illidan. And nobody puts Illidan in the corner. How do you think the Council of Three Hammers will react if and when Magni wakes up from his crystal nap? Uh, we actually talked about it just a moment ago, uh, Jimmy AI. But... Um, I'd imagine that he'd be surprised, happy, and then it entirely depends on Magni's reaction. Is he going to be cool with it? Is he going to be pissed about it? That entirely depends on the reaction. Finally, I will be getting my chance to praise you, Akros Mao. I got to say that of all the streamers that I follow, you're the greatest one. You interact way better and more with us viewers than others. You pay attention and make us feel like a part of your stream, not just watching you. So from all of us, I can say that we love you as a streamer and YouTuber. Lots of love from Norway and have a little imagination of me feeding you bacon. Akros Mao, thank you so much. Are my cheeks red yet? Thank you. Really, I mean it. Thank you so much. And it's... It's, it's the reason why I stream, to be honest. It's it's my chance to interact with you guys and girls. If I just wanted to play a game, I would just play a game. And I wouldn't need a chat room to uh, to be, play part of it. So I love it, man. 
And I love it when people take the time to send you a message on Facebook, ask questions, be interested in it. Like, I wish they wouldn't have fucked over the YouTube comment section, because if the YouTube comment section was still easy to respond to, I would have been there every single day in the YouTube comment section responding to each and every one of them. I still read them, I still try to keep up with them, but just responding is just a pain in the ass. Um... But I love interacting with everybody, and everybody is so kind. You know, you'll get the occasional troll, and sometimes the negative comments will get you down. But then there are guys and girls like you that they pick you up and make you fly, man. It's amazing. So thank you, really. What is the lore of the orc demon hunter guy, Kazul in the Cleft of Shadows? I just asked you that, Spetsko. Uh, it's not a demon hunter as far as I can tell. So where do you get the information from that he's a demon hunter? Who of the four elemental lords is considered the strongest pre-dev? Um, like the elements, like there is no, there shouldn't be a stronger one, there should be balance. Like check out Avatar, you know, one guy brings all the elements together. Uh, but from the elemental lords, if I had to take a pick, I would say Ragnaros, because he was able to take Elekir's son and absorb his powers. Uh, and he just played a massive role in it all. But I think there's supposed to be balance between them all. And Sticky Nut, thank you so much for subscribing. Are you quoting Garrosh's times change? Uh huh. We did the Garrosh uh, for Sir Garrosh Gudan one. Dragons are shown to be able to transform into humanoid form. This is no surprise, but is there any limit to what they can change into, like a race or gender, or are they free to turn into anything they can imagine as long as it's humanoid? I think uh, dragons are able to transform into whatever they choose, to be honest. Um. Like they can make themselves appear or whatever they want. If you remember the novel Dawn of the, Dawn of the Aspects. There was like this vision showing up. No, that was that's Tyr that I was talking about. Hang on. I'm trying to think of a moment where a dragon didn't transform itself into a hot female or a wise looking dude, but I can't remember the moment that it did. Nope, can't remember the moment that that happened. But I think they can um, they can pick whatever form they want, to be honest. You have to go to you have to go, Gecko Kid. Well, have a good one, man. What do you think will be a good plotline in Warcraft 4 if it ever happens? Uh, the ones we just talked about. Uh, the origin of Azeroth. Titus coming down to shape the planets. Um, the battle against the old gods and the elemental lords. The early races like the Dark Trolls, I think were there. The Tauren, I think were there. Murlocs, maybe. A couple of those. And then do the early history like the War of the Shifting Sands and stuff like that. That could be cool. Uh, we did that one, Hans Bruno. I really hope Azora is the next expansion. This one, Legion, would lead into it nicely. It could very well lead into it, yeah. Like, if we, um... We know that Azora is gonna have influences. But we don't know if Azora herself is... Part of it as a boss or whatnot. So it could very well lead into it, yeah. What is the lore behind Nobu? Uh, what exactly do you want to know, Ryuk Liner? Which of the three Windrunner sisters would you rather have sex with? Uh, one of them is dead. One of them is missing. And one of them is a grieving widow. Like, what do, what do you think, Jacob? What do you want to do there? Uh, that do you think about Jaina's father? About Admiral de Proudmoor? We did that one. Do you know any lore about Malorn? Uh, yeah... Demigod fought in the War of the Ancients against Archimond and got his neck broken. And then... I believe Malorn, from ancient myths... Mm, not gonna say made it, but he got together with Elune and they made Sonarius. And then y Ysira, the green dragon, was like your Sonarius stepmother. So when Malorn died in the War of the Ancients, everybody was very sad, and Yasir was like, I'll get you! Um, and now I'm trying to think, what has he done afterwards? Like, he probably returned to the Emerald Nightmare, right? Or the Emerald Dream, even. Enormous white stack, he is the father of Sonarius, blah blah blah. Blah, blah, blah. Word of the Ancients. Blah, blah, blah. Resurrection. There we go. Oh, yeah. The whole quest line there in Cataclysm. At the end of the quest, the Sanctuary must not fall. Lemel Furion successfully resurrects Malorn. 
Murder after being resurrected, Malorn joins the Guardians of Hyjal and defeats Lord Ryalif and the other enemies attacking the Sanctuary Malorn. He then runs off towards the Regrove and is nowhere to be seen to offer the quest The Power of Malorn, where he appears in the Sanctuary afterwards. Yeah, there was the whole cutscene with Jared, if I remember correctly. So there you go. Seven chats slower than Trump's rope burning. Aside from Invincible, do any other mounts have lore with them? Some of them. Um, Ashes of Alar is like Kale's pet a phoenix. Uh, the Headless Horseman has a story. Kinda depends on, on the mount itself, to be honest. Where do you think the class hall for priests is going to be in Legion? Sticky Nuts, uh, about three weeks ago, did a Q&A called All About Legion, in which I talk about possible locations for the follower halls. For the priest, I suggested Scarlet Monastery as a good location. Alrighty, Volticon. What is my favorite cake? Uh, Spetsko, I got a sweet tooth, man. I mean, I mean, look at me. I love them sweets. So any kind of cake is uh, good for me. Will Fro and Jaina ever consummate their love? There have been many fan arts that have seen that moment, so sure. Any lore mistakes, disappointments you are scared that Bliss might add in Legion? Um, disappointments, I think the one thing that we all dread, that we've learned from Wars of Draenor, is that the content is going to drop after the initial patch of the initial game. I hope... Really hope that Blizzard has learned and that we will not get another chapter cut out, another content cut out. I hope that they got the shit in order and they prepared for the next expansion. And that we'll gradually get the content that we need to keep entertained. I'm not a fan of the whole one year expansion cycle. I'd rather have a, a long expansion with just proper content in between. Than very short expansions that feel filler and that feel rushed and all that good stuff. So that's my massive, you know... That's what I'm scared about for Legion. Um, other than that, Artifact System has a lot of potential. But it also has a lot of potential to fill. Uh, an Artifact for each and every class and each and every spec. With a fun quest line and a good system behind it. That's ambitious. To say the least. So I hope they'll deliver on that. But only time will tell. I'm not going to write off Legion simply because Warlords was disappointing to me. Uh, and if Legion turns out to be disappointing again, well, the choices are very easy, you know. You can either send your money to something that you don't enjoy, or you can't. Mm. Twitter lore changes, those as well. <laughs> and Argara, thank you very much for subscribing, be welcome. Are you a milk coffee hater? I wouldn't say hater, but... You know, if you put milk in your coffee, you might as well just drink milk, right? Got to drink your coffee, black man. Um, could be. They don't want to repeat the whole Blade Spy Cutabor Capital Fiasco again. Yeah. Why don't the old gods or any evil genius cause corrupt us as champions to destroy Azeroth? We have bested all thus far. Uh, Arthas tried to do that. And then came Tyrion Ex Machina. Um... And he was like, Light, give me one final blessing. And he shared a Frostmourne. And then King Terranus resurrected us all. And poof, his plans were destroyed. So Arvis was one of those villains that just, you know, he was ready. He struck us down. He got us all ready up there on Ice Crown. He was like, yep, you are the strongest. I'm going to convert you into my army. He whacked us down, tried to resurrect us. And then um, his plans failed. So Arvis was one of those that tried it. Other creatures, they don't really go for the heroes of Azeroth. They go for more for lore characters to try to corrupt them. And usually heroes rise up to the occasion and uh, kick their butts. The in-game sound is a bit high. I wanted to ask you to lower it. Do you mean the music, Argaraf? I can lower the music. If it's too loud. Is this better? I hope it's better. If we kill Sargeras or Archimon or any of the other major demons in the Twisted Nether, will they die forever? If so, the Irak and Bulvar will come in and be like, there must always be a Sargeras. <laughs> um, it seems to be that that's the only place where you can kill them because their souls are anchored to the Twisted Nether, so that's the only area where they can actually die. Will Broxigar or Bulvar show up with there must always be a Sargeras? Who knows? 
What's the lore behind Purgation Isle? I don't get the point of this place. I have no fucking clue. Well, thankfully, we have Wowpedia for the win. The island has a mysterious, unknown history. Good start. It is haunted by ghosts of renegade paladins, monks, mages, and priests that, for some reason, are condemned and cannot find the peace of death. It seems that Kormok is the cause of the Isle's ghost, and is said that he delighted in summoning forth the souls of the banished dead. It was also a renowned place to farm money. Due to the fact that the mobs may drop up to 30 silver each. Since the Cataclysm, the ghost of the Isle appeared to have disappeared, and the lands have been claimed by members of the Stormpike clan, working together with the Bloodfame pack. It should be noted that though the mobs are alliance friendly, no quest or resource exists here for that faction. So there's no storyline. No wonder that I don't know about it. There's nothing. There's nothing! Uh, so there's no story. It's just an island with ghosts that you can farm for silver. And it could be that it's a part of an area that I wanted to use in a future storyline. Or something else. Are the Draenei immortal? Because the gap between Arrakis, Draenor, and Den Azeroth seems kind of large. It's Velen, albeit old, doesn't seem that affected. They're not immortal, but they do get very, very old. Welcome, Varian. When seeing Garona in our garrison, don't take a sword and cut her head off. Because... You know I'm all about that base. Because, um... During the comics, he actually met with Corona. And then Jaina did the whole... You can't kill her because this is Fedamore and this is my juris jur jurisdiction. That was a difficult word to push out there. Um... And it could be that Jaina informed him about those events. That she told him that Corona was under some sort of spell. That he knew about that. Or maybe, uh, you know, he, don't, he doesn't care anymore. He's a different variant now. What are you most excited about in Legion lore-wise? Sorry if you answered this already. No problem, Malaysia. Uh, most excited for, um, like I mentioned, the artifact system. Like I said, it has a lot of potential. And I'm really hoping that they're going to deliver a progression system past level 110. It's going to be freaking awesome. I'm curious about the whole Death Knight introduction. The whole Death Knight starting area. I'm hoping that they're going to give Illidan a proper redemption story, or at least a proper explanation as to what exactly happened during the Burning Crusade. Why did he turn from this anti-hero into this so-called, you know, he's crazy kind of guy. So I'm excited for that. And besides that, everything else, man. New lore is... I'm ready. Cut down an ally and then we lecture you. <laughs> Indeed. Check your Twitch messages for my question and theory, please. Colton, I don't check twi uh, Twitch messages because it's all spam. Send a PM on Facebook, please, and I'll check it out whenever I have the time. What happened to the rest of the Highborn Night Elves after the Sundering, such as those in Teneris, Eldrafalas, Duskwood, Felwood, etc.? I read that it was only Azara Highborn who returned to Naga, and there's Highborn from Eldrafalas directly rivaled those of Azara since in Azari. Some of them died, some of them stood up against the Burning Legion, tried to fight against them, and died. Some of them, like the Highborn in Dire Maul, decided to summon a demon and suck the energy out of him, and they later joined the. Um, they later joined the Night Elves. Well, some already early on joined the Night of Resistance and they became High Elves. But were Varian going in crazy raids or is he just going weak and all? I get your point below, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Do you think the Corcoran Juggernaut is worth 721k gold? I have never had 7 and 1. 7. I have never had that much gold on my character, so I can't tell you. Depends on how much you have. What is the Lord of the Proudmoor family and what do we know about Jaina's mother? I've actually done a QA called Jaina's mother, I think. Uh, we don't know who her mother is, and besides that, one of her brothers died on a ship when it was burned by dragons. Her father was killed by uh, Rexar. As Jaina opened the gates to Fedamore, Jaina herself, her city was bombed, and then became the leader of the Kirin Tor. And another brother was part of the RPGs, I think, or Warcraft, but he was retconned out of the storyline, so he's no longer part of it. Uh, that's kind of the story, so we don't know where her mother is, or what happened to her, or who she even is. Another question about trolls. How did they become shadow hunters? Volton is one, but he's also a monk. In your video, your video of Volton Shadows of the Horde, you said that. Um, well, I wouldn't classify Volton as a monk. I don't know if you would say that he's a class. I don't know if I actually said he was a monk or that he was trained by the monks. Um, he has known, he has learned some monk tricks, like he can punch someone's throat out. But how do you become a shadow hunter? 
What I remember from Vol'jin's story is that you go into the forest where uh, the spirits and the Loa, they test you and they give you trials. And if you make it out of the forest, then you're a shadow hunter. But if you don't, then you die. And the visions, they don't stick around. So, yeah. Let me look it up. Shadow Hunter Wowpedia. Wowpedia, your best source of information. Huh. Oh, here we go. That's from the RPG. No storyline as to how to become one? That's weird. Huh. Yeah, there's the whole bit about voodoo and whatnot, but... It doesn't really st state how you become a uh, demon of um, a shadow hunter. That's cool. I mean, I know that about the the origin of Vol'jin story, but I told you, it's kind of cool. Mm. Um, let's see. Is there any lore behind the challenge mode? Since there's quests sending you there and you go to vendors related to it? Challenge mode? What do you mean, Arkarov? You mean the challenge is given to you from your garrison with the whole quest line by Muradin? Do you mean those? But then it depends on what the quest line says. Do you reckon Alternate Gul'dan will find this skull and be like, Damn! Alternate me messed up bad. Mm, I doubt it. Considering that nobody mentioned the alternate doom hammer compared to the doom hammer with the frog wields, I doubt it. Can you use your influence where you go to BlizzCon and get Blizzard to add like a cinematic when you fail a raid, where you see what happens then, like a world destroyed? Pretty please. I have no influence, King Dirty Har. I wish I had, man. It is now five minutes until the Battle of Lights Hopeful Chapel starts. Whoop, whoop. You said you like Fro more pre cataclysm. Why? Uh, because because Fro's story is one of uh, like as a baby was picked up. And he was taken to the internment camps and there they raised him as a slave with the ultimate intention of getting Fral to lead these orcs in an army against the alliance. Fral broke out out of his slave life like he was kicked and he was spat on and all kinds of vile things that happened to him. He broke out, he found his people, he learned about the origin of his people and he reformed the horde with the intention of making it a better horde than it was like the horde originally started out as an alien invading force and for all trying to make it better um, and then later you know the, the, he wasn't this uber guy he wasn't this uber orc and then with the cataclysm they turned him from that character that tried to do good to someone that tells aspects how to be aspects that takes the forefront and everything that saves the world you know, and it's not bad to save the world, like somebody has to do it. But the whole bit about teaching the aspects how to be aspects, like teaching Nosdormu to live in the moment. Because that's how you do it as a time as like, what the fuck? What 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 does someone like Fral know about it? And just, you know, his power increased. Like he was the weakest link in the uh, shamanistic organization, the Urban Ring. And then he comes back as the strongest rock, you know, and the whole cataclysm where you follow him around and you see his wedding and you put him back together and you're like oh, nah. there he is again end of Mr. Pandaria, oh there's Fral again end of war crimes, oh there's Fral again end of war of the Renor, oh there's Fral again so yeah if you could be a dragon aspect what would your aspect be? I would pick the green one so I can people, give people uh, nightmares if dragons can become whatever they want to, why did Chromie become a gnome? Why wouldn't she become a gnome? I'm going to make more videos with Kalis. They're so awesome. Um, Kalis is going to have parts in the Nerzu storyline, which is up and coming. Uh, any massive projects like the story of Marcus, I would love to get her on board when the Got Milk is released for Legion with the story of Marcus. And besides that, I love Kalis' work as well. 
So if I can get her on board or uh, get her to do things, definitely. Kazoo looks like a demon hunter with a Sargeras eye band. Yeah, but he's not a demon hunter though. Like an eye band doesn't instantly mean demon hunter. Like uh, Dragfar also has the eye band. It's not a demon hunter. How do you feel about us killing things described as gods? Anzu Sefer Rukmar ala Alakir and Yesheraj. Um Sometimes it's a little bit ridiculous, but at other times it's kind of cool. You know, it's usually a group of heroes that do it. Um, and sometimes we don't even play a part in it, I don't believe. Well, we play a part in it, like the ending of the Cataclysm, it's, it's mentioned that Thrall saved the world with the aspects and some adventurers, so we don't play a massive part in that. And sometimes, you know, something cool for the game, even though lore-wise it doesn't make a lot of sense, it's, it's fine. You know, it's cool. If we are able to open up a portal from Ashran in one timeline to Storm in our timeline, why will we ever need time walking dungeons again? Dragons again? Won't a open portal to a different world time mean trouble down the line? Demon sneaking through? Um, I wouldn't say that the portals in Ashran are technically lore bits, but then again, um, jeez, camera horse much. <clears throat> um... But there are portals like uh, the ones in Everbloom that have a possibility to do so. But what do you mean, uh, would we ever need time walking dragons again? Like we can now open it ourselves so we don't need the bronze dragonflight anymore. Maybe. And would an open portal to a different world time mean trouble down the line? Demon sneaking through? Maybe. But then again, any and all magic has the potential to have sneaky sneaky demons. Alrighty, Caliber. Thank you for joining. For what reason did Arthas imprison a Valifria Dreamwalker inside ICC? Um, they wanted to reanimate her into a minion of the Scourge. Do you think the leader of the Bloodfang Worgen might be a follower for Legion? Maybe. Do you think the Skull Monastery event will work once we get to the Ashbringer, or is Blizzard going to look over it? I don't think it will work with the Artifact Ashbringer. Um. <laughs> I don't think it will work for the uh, artifacts, but the corrupted Ashbringer maybe. But is that is the blister? Sorry, I just looked at the wizard uh, at the whisper even. Huh. Um. Yeah, so it's not something that Blizzard looks over. It's just you know, it's not the real corrupted Ashbringer. Bum, bum, ba, da, bum. We got 15 minutes left on the clock, ladies and gentlemen. If we ever get player houses, if so, do you have any wishes for it? Anything except for what the garrison was and stood for. Has there ever been a lore moment that has made you really mad because it wasn't how you thought it should have gone? No. Um, not so much because it didn't go how I imagined it. But there, like mad is, is a big word, but there have been disappointing moments for sure. For me, it was more like it doesn't make any sense, like the twisting and transcending realities, the ending of the cataclysm, you know, stuff like that. Has there ever been a lore moment that has made you? Oh, we just did. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you think Ashara still has contact with the Legion and is working for them above uh, above the old gods, or is there involvement in the Legion due to the old gods trying to benefit from this invasion? Time will tell, Sticky Nut. I'm actually going to talk about it in the upcoming Q and A for coming Monday. Um, I I brashly said that the um, Old Gods and Titans are going to be working together, but we don't know for certain. Uh, so that's entirely up for speculation, and we'll find out. We cannot predict the future. If you were King or War Chief, how would you use all the resources we collect in Draenor and our Azeroth? Built myself a massive statue, of course. Come on, that's an easy one. The artifact staff that we saw in the Legion trailer, was that meant for a mage spec? If so, do you know what staff it is and what's the lore behind it? There's one staff from Alodi, the first guardian. There is Kilfas, his weapon called Fellow Malorn. And then one up for speculation, but some say... Um, what do you call it? Antonidas, Antonidas' staff. 
How would you feel about the gnomes standing up after the abuse they suffered through punting to, st <laughs> to from the gnome lords of Azeroth, putting all the other race into slavery through the use of brilliant gnomish technology? Yes, please. Build up the park. Oh yeah, that's also something on the list. What were your question of BlizzCon B? I remember you saying you're going, and I will be advertising you in the coming weekend. I'm going to the night security on a LAN party. With 15 to 18 year olds. Hope some of them play WoW and get interested in you. Awesome. Thank you, Akros. Um, if we get a proper Q&A during BlizzCon and we can ask questions, then um, I ask them to reverse the decision to make the Twisted Nether transcend all realities because it makes no sense. If that's already been asked, then I would ask them about the dragon aspects, if they can give them, or at least the dragons, if they can give them the ability to reproduce back, like they took it away after the end of the Cataclysm. And then finally, I'd ask them something about how did Catcar become the Guardian or something like that, if those questions have been asked before. At the end of ICC, King Terranus shows up, but was it really Terranus? Who knows? I like how many camera whores there are, by the way. I love it. Do you think Alira and Trellia will be important to the Legion expansion lore? Yes. Still streaming? Yes. Hey, Noble. Hi, UDL. What server? Terracar EU. What unfinished storyline would you like to see finished most? Um, it's a little bit too late for Raffion's storyline in Warlords. Um, Coltra Deathweaver. Been taken by Sylvanas to the Undercity. I would love to know what's up with that. The artifact stuff is on the Legion trailer. There you go. Uh, you missed my donation. I'll read donations after the Q&A, maybe. Have you ever heard Ego Raptors Zelda raps? Yup. Yup, yup. What are your thoughts on Demon Hunter starting at level 98? Seems a bit high to start for a new character. Yeah, I was kind of surprised that they went with such a high level. I thought the level 90 would be fine. Like, they did the boost with World of Dread in order to get people into the current content because all those old expansions is quite daunting to go through all of that and it worked a lot of people joined the game they were like oh yeah now it could be right there at the end game and it's gonna be fun um for legion i'm like why would you do that you know warlords of the Rain Order is not old uh leveling is awesome in warlords and um you know it's only 10 levels you can blast through it in like a day even less so why would you want to push people away from the warlords of the Rain Order content that little that there is. Um, so I thought it was kind of high, yeah. But that's up to Blizzard. Jaina's mother, Dreadlord confirmed. Uh huh. I think it's because, unlike the Death Knight, Blizzard isn't confident enough to, in previous expansion, make players go through it all again. I suppose. Return of Undead Zandalari. New class Sun Shadow Hunter. Only class to play are the gnomes and the trolls. Love it. Would you rather fight one house, 100 male house mana storm size Archimons or one Archimon size male house mana storm? Um, both scenarios I'd be doomed, so no thank you. Someone took me off my seat. Rude. What do you think about the Attack of Light's Hope Chapel? The one you fight as a DK. Personally, I love it. Especially when Tyrion screams, Arthas! Yeah, me too, man. I love that one. I actually uh, read the manga Death Knight today. And not only does Darien get a ghost of the past visiting him, also uh, Kultra. Or Fauruzan even. Fauruzan has, uh, has his father pop up. It's kind of cool. What do you think the story implication of every player being the leader of the same class hall? Very curious to see how that's going to go down. Trivi. Um, I wonder how they're going to pick that. I wonder. We'll find out. Jesus, dude. There you go. Fixed it for you. There you go. How much time do we have left, by the way? Eight minutes. All right. Can you find anything about the red orcs, such as why they reverted back to green orcs? Magic. Who do you see? No, sorry, I really, that's the answer, right? Jaina helping to cleanse uh, Grom Soul magic. Can you find anything about... <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Okay, um, who do you see as the new leader of the light? The bishop has been dead for some time now. Uh, Anduin, right? He could be a leader. Maybe? 
Do we need another new Archbishop? It never really ends with them well. Noble confirms as an old god, making nightmares. Yep, yep. What's up with Coltra and Fasari? And there has been some secret romance between them. Maybe. Although, um, the manga explained a lot more about it. Like, they, they, the, the Blood Elf tried to convince the other guy to be like, Yo, you don't have to do this. And the other guy was like, stabby. So it's kind of cool. Orcs originally reddish like Garrosh and Felmage corrupted their skin the deep red you see in Hellfire Peninsula. Orcs lost their minds and consumed Felm energy. Do you reckon Durat and Euro of Alternate Dragon Wife will punish Alternate Gromash for what he did? Nope, they forgave him. Unfortunately. Adi Garbork. What do you know about the Dragon Riders of Lorafaran and were there other Dragon Riders and what makes them special? Christ, what are the questions today? Prince Torv, Dragon Riders of Lorvaran. Oh, that's the uh, area with the with the Draenei, yeah. Oh, cool. <clears throat> Long ago, 10,000 years past, I was flesh and bone, just like you. I was prince of this land and a dragon rider, blessed by Ysira of the dream. Have you not heard of Ysira? Well, the green dragon aspects, blah blah blah. It was Ysira herself that gifted my kingdom with her br brood. We stood shoulder to shoulder with the noble creatures, and they allowed us to ride them into battle against their enemies. All was well for many centuries until... Deathwing's brood. Ysira's benevolence raised the ire of Deathwing, patron of the Black Dragonflight. They attacked us in our sleep. Many died on the initial surge, but the greens rose to protect us. The bones are all that remained of the once great dragons. None were spared. I was the last to die. As I felt my spirit leaving my mortal shell, I swore a blood oath. A pact was made between this land and I. My blood for this world. I became the sole keeper of the history of my people. I cannot rest until I'm secure in knowing that the story of the Dragon Riders of Lorevan is not lost in the passages of time. Cool. Yeah, during the War of the Ancients they were blown up. That's awesome, I never knew about that. I've learned all kinds of things during this Q&A, man. Awesome. And Quick C, thank you very much for subscribing. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we have like five minutes left. Oh, uh, we're at the bottom of the page as well. Cool. Has anything actually happened with Nomadagon yet? Nope. They're kind of cleansing it. The whole Nomadagon starting area. I'm sure it's something to do with Manor of Dying if no will finish this campaign. Blah, blah, blah. Don't ever remove your cap. The room would explode with our lore running down the walls. Uh-huh. Thank you very much, King Dirty. Oh, what's your dream pedal by P? Sky's the limit. Um, I already got a potling nibbler, so I'm good. Like a, a dream pet to have? Whew, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm good with the nibblers, man. And Quixie, thank you very much. I'm a complete cam whore, I'm sorry I can't help it, I noticed. <laughs> you made a video series where you awesomely leveled up Pandora Shaman, still play the character? Sometimes Vodicon to record some materials or quests that I've never done with the Pandoran. We might continue the storyline, or at least the questing with Legion uh, with the Pandoran. Or we might pop over to the Demon Hunters, we're not entirely sure yet. But we're hoping to do it again. Do you think Akar is going to be an enemy? He gave us a warning after we helped him break free from Jindo and Zugarup. Maybe one day, if we ever return to the troll storyline. I will just be Panda Senzai. Beep boop. Beep boop. Beep boop. Right, everybody. Um, I think we're about there. Like, if unless there are some last minute questions from people. What is the difference between the Eredar and the Drenai? Eredar is the original name. Drenai is like refugees, I think. Um, the, Dren the Eredar called themselves Drenai when they ra ran away from Argus. When Sargeras offered, you know, the Eredar a place in his legion. And those that stayed with the legion and Sargeras, they just kept on calling themselves um, Eredar. Was the Lord of the Twilight Hammer Clan, have they always been corrupted? Twilight Hammer Clan is all about bringing about the end of the world. Have they always been corrupted? They've also been, always been pretty damn nutty. Yeah. 
Which kind of god is Hakar? Uh, Loa, if I can remember. Loa or... Yeah, Loa. Because Loas are also considered to be demigods, if I remember correctly. Pizza or taco? Oof, pizza. Am I gonna order a pizza tonight? I don't know if I am. You speak the language of beep boop. <laughs> At the end, nice. Hi, JLCS. What made Sargeras go mad and evil? Uh, that story's been retconned a couple of times. Right now, the story is that he, uh, you know, he did his task given by the Titans, bringing order, imprisoning the evil of the universe. And at some point, he just realized, you know what? The universe putting up such a fight, this is not the way to go. And his confusion, his doubts, he, you know, he just became, became corrupt. And he joined Team Evil. Uh, King Dirty Horror, we did that one, man. We bested all other evils. Why doesn't it corrupt us champions? Because then we wouldn't have any characters to play with. <laughs> exiled ones. Oh, exiled. Thank you very much, UDL. Exiled ones. And Manari is like corrupted or twisted in, in form. Like the Drenai call the Eredar Manari because they're corrupted and twisted. Thanks for streaming. I've my day and always enjoy watching you. Thank you very much, Dark Mortal. No problem, King Dirty Heart. No problem at all. Right, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do... Uh, this. There we go. Be free! <laughs> Hi, everybody. Freedom! <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Oh, everybody's adding me as friends now. Cool. Uh, let's see. Let us round this up for the YouTube. Before we forget, we have now reached the one hour mark. Ladies and gentlemen on YouTube, thank you very much for joining me during this Q&A. Sorry that I wasn't as strong as I usually am. My brain's a little bit fried, I suppose. But we also found out about a couple of new lore things. I completely forgot about those Dragon Riders with the Drenna area. That was really, really cool. As always, ladies and gentlemen, this is the subscriber end of the month Q&A, which is my way of saying thank you to those who went above and beyond and subscribed on the Twitch channel. Uh, you can find me streaming there at least once a week, but I try to do several a week. Uh, as always, you don't have to send me uh, money or subscribe in order to ask me questions. You can also send me a PM on Facebook, and I'll come back to you whenever I can. As always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. And until next time, guys. See ya!